prolonged economic stagnation, too many jobless people and failing public infrastructure. It's another day in South Africa, isn't it? But they all do paint a very bleak picture about the future of our country. And then to pile more misery on top of that, uh, we got the GDP numbers out yesterday for Q2 down 0.07. Uh, despite this, business leadership South Africa's CEO, uh, Busi Siwa Mavuso, is the eternal optimist. And let's be honest, you've always been an eternal optimist, but it must be difficult to stay so positive, especially off the back of 0.7 down for Q2. Busi Siwa joining us this morning. So how do we stay positive with all that bad news that I just driveled out? Karat, it's difficult. Good morning, and thank you very much for inviting me. It's absolutely difficult um, because I think a lot of South African consumers, a lot of South Africans uh, broadly, find themselves in a particularly difficult position in terms of where we find ourselves at the moment. What with the 44% unemployment in terms of the expanded definition, we saw the GDP figures come in yesterday. Our economy has further contracted which really doesn't augur well for those who are actually looking to hopefully secure jobs in the near future. You know, but amidst all of that, Gareth, I don't think that we can actually deny the efforts that are actually being put in place and the interventions that are being put in place to try and actually accelerate and change the trajectory of our economy. You know, when you look at the fact that we're sitting in an environment now where both government and business, in particular in labor, actually, to their credit, labor agrees that important to changing or to accelerating our economic recovery is the structural reforms. And I think we have seen a lot of progress being made in that regard. Mm. After 17 years at the beginning of the year, Garrett, we have seen the auction of the spectrum. Yes, it's not complete because it's not allocated, but we are going there. And I think really the energy plan that we actually saw the president announcing a few weeks ago, that was rather positive. I never thought, you know, that you see the ANC government moving towards that trajectory, which a lot within the ANC government will tell you that it's liberalization of the electricity market or it's actually bringing in the private sector through the back door. Interestingly enough, yesterday we were at an event with Finance Minister Korongwane. His articulation of what needs to be done in South Africa right now, his views as he and his analysis, you know, of how the private sector needs to intervene, what are some of the things that we need to do to take the country forward? That was actually positive. And I looked at him and I thought, but why are we not actually hearing this more and more from government? But of course, you know that, you know, uh, government is not a, 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 a um, they don't hold uh, the same views. And I think you do get different views depending which part of government you actually yeah, yeah. speak to. But if you see such a central ministry, such as the finance, who actually understands the problems and the solutions that are required to get South Africa out of this economic quagmire, it actually gives us hope, you know, to say that those that are at the helm of controlling the economy at least, you know, have a, a, a sober sense of, of, of what we need to do as a country and as an economy. Well, it sounds, uh, it sounds at least positive off the back of what the finance minister said yesterday. I wasn't uh, appraised of what the finance minister said. Maybe if the office is watching this morning, the finance ministry, I'd love to speak to the finance minister uh, and find out exactly why it is that you're so excited, Busasiwe, about what he had to say. But help me understand, here's the issue. When we're talking about uh, growing the economy and GDP, and you used uh, accelerating structural reforms, I get the sense accelerating uh, structural reforms is just far too slow. People are going to ask, those who are on the workshop floor, those who are struggling to pay their bills, struggling to find jobs, are going to say it's all great to say it's accelerating, but they're not seeing it. Why is it so slow, or is that just perception? Reforms by their very nature are actually long-term, right? so I think it's, it's, it is going to take time for us to be able to actually uh, enjoy the fruits of the plans and, and, and some of the decisions that are actually made at the moment. So from the energy front, for instance, there is going to be a lot of, uh, of, of, of investment that is going to be coming through at the back of the self-generation uh, for private sector in particular, you know, being lifted to an unlimited number, you know, but I think we actually going to see that only probably maybe minimum in the next two years, right? 
So I think, you know, uh, at the moment, people do feel the pinch, you know, people do understand, uh, or people are actually, actually find themselves in this uh, 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 difficult situation. And it's difficult to really see some rays of sunlight when you are in the midst of darkness, like, you know, a lot of South Africans find themselves in at the moment. And I think the continuing load shedding is actually not helping. You know, you know that the numbers that came out yesterday, the big reason why for the two has actually come in so bleak and so weak against Kota One is precisely because of the load shedding. You know, when I think there are a, a, a plans that have actually been put in place to actually uh, address some of those issues. But, Gareth, when I actually put out this article last week, I was even looking at the report that came out, for instance, from the AG's office, you know, in terms of how she reported without fear or favor in as far, in as, far as the KZN floods are concerned. So yeah. for me, that institutional strength, you know, those institutions which actually don't shy away from actually holding government accountable where they actually need to, because government was really called out last week, you know, to say that you didn't do what you, were, you, you promised to do, you know, and people are going to have to be held accountable. So I think that the strength of our media fraternity, for instance, you know, so I think I, 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 I looked at this holistically to say that when you were to actually just do a checklist of where South Africa is and how we fare in a whole lot of areas, you will see that we do have pockets of excellence in a whole lot of areas. So one of the things, for instance, that the finance minister said yesterday, Gareth, and we were at a Sunlam event where I think they were celebrating their 100 year anniversary, if I'm not mistaken. He was speaking about how the ports and the rail are actually a, 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 a serious impediment to economic growth in South Africa at the moment. He was talking about how we actually need to ensure you know, that we get the private sector participation and private sector investment into the ports and rail to get that going. So I was and talking about how part of this, isn't it, Bush, Siwe? Getting the infrastructure up and running is obviously one part of this as well. But, but you mentioned the moments ago that uh, leadership, national leadership, national government was called out and needs to be held accountable. It, it talks to this leadership vacuum that many people are talking about uh, in our country, a separation of government and what people on the ground are actually saying. How damaging is this lack of leadership from the very top? in our country. Last question briefly. Gareth, it talks to the vacuum in leadership, but I think it also talks, talks to ideology, which the finance minister addressed as well yesterday, to say that we are mistaken as government to think that the solutions that are needed in the country today or to get ourselves out of this economic rut, those solutions are going to come from government. She said we need the private sector to intervene. You know, the ideology that the state is going to have to control everything the finance minister says that is not possible, not when we actually have such a weak fiscal and a weak balance sheet as the state. You know, mm. you're sitting with private sectors who bought the balance sheets to can actually make the difference. Why are we not allowing them to actually come in? You know, so those are the articulations that you don't often hear, you know, from, 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 from government, correct? Because there is this dogmatic ideology of the state having to control all the 743 SOEs when all of them are dysfunctional. So when you start, you know, hearing such uh, 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 articulations coming from government, you know, in terms of what needs to be done and the agency with which it needs to be done, mm -hmm. I think those are all the reasons why we actually need to be optimistic as South Africans, in spite of all the uh, 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 negatives that we have as a country. I appreciate uh, the time, some positivity at least, but still a leadership vacuum, which is a major issue. That's not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, South Africa, the business leadership South Africa CEO, Busisiwe Mavuso,